Assalamu alaikum wa wabarakatuh. Welcome to a new video. It's been a long time since I put up a refutation. Excited about this one. This video I'm going to be refuting some critics of Islam on the claim that Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't have miracles. The reason why I chose to do this video is because in my previous video, which you should definitely check out, me and brother Ijaz the Trini um, go through attestations for the miracles of Jesus uh, Isa alayhi salam and compare them to the miracles of Muhammad peace be upon him so yeah basically the conclusion was the miracles of the Prophet peace be upon him are much stronger and superior in attestation to the miracles of Jesus due to the um, we actually have eyewitnesses as opposed to Christians who are stuck with anonymous gospel authors and I mean we don't even have eyewitnesses for those reports in any case, for this video, my victims once again are going to be David Wood and his faithful sidekick El Fadi, who even though has quite a nice studio, apparently can't afford to get a good editor. Uh, we will be covering things related to the rapid growth of Islam, but today we are going to fo uh, focus on... El Fadi, you gotta be careful because you keep on dropping F-bombs like that. Someone might clip it and take it out of context and use it to their advantage. Anyhow... Fire intro. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Before even starting off, I'd like to point out that uh, these guys try to make this challenge impossible by saying you can't use hadiths in order to prove that Muhammad peace be upon him performed miracles. Well, what are you going to use exactly? Um, in any case, uh, it is ironic um, since again hadiths are more reliable than what we have in the Gospels. Um, well, Fadi says this. It's really baffling to me that Muslims will even want to argue about miracles using the Hadith. Why not the Quran? Mm -hmm. Now, you see, this wouldn't even work, because if the Quran says that the Muhammad, peace be upon him, performed a miracle, then it would still be rejected. In fact, uh, David makes this very claim in the same video. Um, it makes no sense for someone to say hey, I was taken on a journey. No one saw it, but I was, trust me on this one, I was, I was taken on a journey. Um, so best case scenario, you could say, well, the Quran says it, but no one sees it. I actually agree with David Wood here. I mean, if the Quran said something like, Muhammad, peace be upon him, raise the dead, then it would, of course, need some sort of an external source to verify it. Uh, and, I mean, that's what Al-Fadi and David would be requesting if it did say something like that. Of course, it's very important to keep in mind that this pretty much applies to the miracles found in the Bible as well. So if we go to the Old Testament, we find uh, prophets like Moses performing miracles, like you know, parting the Red Sea. Actually, Moses splitting the Red Sea is documented by one person, the author of Exodus, who happens to be Moses. So let's not pretend that the biblical miracles have overwhelming external evidence or anything like that. Of course, Muslims believe in the splitting of the Red Sea because it's found in the Quran, and Christians believe in the splitting of the Red Sea because of their reliance on Jewish canonization or something. I don't know. I don't really care. Carrying on, there's one real argument that David uh, puts forward for his claim, and it's verses that kind of imply that there are no miracles that were performed by the Prophet, peace be upon him. Um, so let's go through these together. So let's read through some of the passages on what the Quran says about this. So chapter 6, verse 37 of the Quran, and they say, the unbelievers say, why has not a sign been sent down to him from his Lord? Say, surely Allah is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know. Notice, why hasn't a sign been sent down? Well, Allah is able to. Well, we would all agree that 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 God can send signs. The question was, why Didn't doesn't he send? send why exactly. doesn't he send down one for Muhammad? Notice, if Muhammad had been performing miracles, and they ask, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The appropriate response would have been, what are you talking about? He just did a miracle last week. There were like 80 people who saw it. Exactly. Something like that. It will be reported. Now, before providing a direct answer, I'd like to turn the tables around at you guys. Because, you see, there is this wonderful verse in the Gospel of Mark that says pretty much the exact same thing. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said... Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. 
Now, if David was consistent, this is how he would be reacting to that. Notice, if Jesus had been performing miracles, and they ask, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The appropriate response would have been, what are you talking about? He just did a miracle last week. There were like 80 people who saw it, exactly. something like that. It will be reported. In any case, saying something like there won't be a sign given to you doesn't mean that no sign was ever shown and no miracle was ever performed by that prophet. However, let's assume that that's the case with the Quran. How do we deal with this argument? Again, if Muhammad had been performing miracles, why not? Oh, by the way, Muhammad performed miracles all the time. Why are you guys keep asking for miracles when he's, he's been performing so many? David, you must be new to this whole Islam thing. Um, you see, the Quran wasn't revealed in a single day. Now, if you're going to claim that the verses that you're quoting were revealed after the splitting of the moon and after other miracles, then you're going to need to substantiate that claim. If a verse is implying that there were no miracles that have been revealed, then that probably means that there weren't any miracles that were revealed yet. In all the examples that David quotes, he brings Meccan chapters. Of course, these are early on in the prophethood of Rasulullah However, in another Meccan chapter, we find the following. And they say, why is a sign not sent down to him from his Lord? So say, the unseen is only for Allah to administer. So wait, indeed, I am with you among those who wait. And in another, we find, he will show you his signs and you will recognize them. And in another one, he says, we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. In other words, the Quran is confirming that miracles will be shown. But what exactly is the type of evidence that David wants from the Qur'an? And they ask, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The appropriate response would have been, what are you talking about? He just did a miracle last week. And well, actually, that's what we find in Surah Al-Baqarah. Those who do not know say, why does Allah not speak to us or there come to us a sign? Thus spoke those before them like their words. Their hearts resemble each other. We have shown clearly the signs to a people who are certain. In faith. Aywa. So there are three types of verses in the Quran. Uh, verses that do not confirm that signs were shown. Verses that speak of signs uh, being shown in the future. And finally, verses that do confirm that signs were given. Carrying on, there are multiple verses in the Quran that speak of signs clearly. Take, for example, Surah Al-Ahzab that speaks of a wind that saved the Muslims from being absolutely annihilated by multiple Arab tribes that surrounded Mecca. Of course, perhaps the most obvious example of a miracle mentioned in the Qur'an is what we find in Surah Al-Qamar, the moon splitting. Uh, chapter 54, verses 1 through 2. The hour of judgment is nigh, and the moon is cleft asunder. But if they see a sign, they turn away and say, this is but transient magic. So, uh, the moon is cleft asunder. There are stories in the Hadith about Muhammad going out and splitting the moon in half and the unbelievers see it and so on. And so this is, this is the miracle and it's right here in the Quran. Now what's the problem? Well, if you read this passage, this doesn't say anything about Muhammad doing anything here. There's nothing about Muhammad. There's nothing about uh, Muhammad going out and uh, saying that this is his sign or something like this. This doesn't say anything about what went on here uh, or even, even that this is some past event. And so you can only conclude that this is talking about Muhammad miraculously doing anything by reading the Hadith and saying, oh, what the Hadith talk about here, this is referring back to this, rather than that story in the Hadith evolving out of this passage of the Quran. I'd like to point out that even though David's argument doesn't really conflict with the linguistics found in the verse, there is a problem here because it conflicts with the reality of the statements of the companions. They all agree that the moon actually split. You won't find an opinion from an early generation Muslim that conflicts with that. On the other hand, there's another miracle in Surah 44 al-Dukhan, which speaks about a miracle uh, occurring in the form of a smoke. In any case, there's a clear difference of opinion among first and second generation Muslims as to whether that miracle occurred at the time 
or if it's something that will occur in the future. That occurred due to those first generation Muslims having different interpretations as to what the verse is referring to. The fact that Hadith compilers preserved both opinions in regards to Surah Dukhan shows that they were being impartial. Since that's the case, there is no reason to assume that there is another opinion in regards to the moon splitting. The first generations of Muslims all agreed that the verse is supposed to be taken literally and that the moon split during the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Speaking of the preservation of conflicting opinions, why isn't there a school of companions that rejected the existence of miracles? Why don't we have Aisha or Umar or Abu Hurair or Ibn Abbas claiming that miracles never happened? Instead, all the companions seem to agree that miracles did happen. That in itself is a reason to believe that there is no other opinion and that the verses that David is using are being misunderstood and misconstrued. Carrying on, there's one more verse that David brings up that I do believe deserves special attention. Surah 17, verse 59, And nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except that the ancients rejected them. And we gave to Samud, the she-camel, a manifest sign, but on her account they did injustice, and we do not send signs but to make men fear. Notice this part right here. It says, nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except that the ancients rejected them. So why doesn't Muhammad have a miracle? Why doesn't Allah give a miracle to Muhammad? Because others rejected them. Others rejected them, so therefore Muhammad doesn't get one either. By the way, using this argument, I am a prophet. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the verse again. Look at this last bit that was so conveniently ignored. Does Allah negate that he will send signs? No, he specifically affirms a form of signs that he will send. Ibn Qayyim in Shifal Ali, when speaking of this verse, mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not provide the signs that are requested to by the pagan Arabs. However, he only reveals signs in order to frighten them. This actually fits in with the narration of Ibn Abbas, which shows that this verse was revealed in response to those that asked for the mountains to be turned to gold and for them to be moved away as a form of a miracle. The narration, of course, is authentic. And with that, it becomes clear that the verse is referring to requested miracles by disbelievers and not miracles in general. The latter is affirmed by the verse and the signs will be shown to the disbelievers to frighten them into accepting the religion of God. Anyhow, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we will be covering things related to the rapid growth of Islam, but today we are going to talk... Uh...